Our uh, <clears throat> way back in uh, well, pretty much first day or first few days, we talked about that you know those tangent lines to uh, to a curve. So say we've got this curve, and then we're looking at this x value, <clears throat> and again they're going back to calling the x value A. But yeah, way back when, we were looking at those tangent lines of <clears throat> the curve at any particular point. Well, there's another <clears throat> angle, I guess you might say, that, that we're going to uh, utilize here. <clears throat> And we've looked at it before, we just didn't maybe say, say it in these terms, but at A, for this particular function, y equals f of x, <clears throat> at A, for uh, y equals f of x, if you look at the curve and then the tangent line to the curve, there's not a whole lot of difference around that particular A value, right? <clears throat> if I look around that tangent line and the curve at A, there's not a whole lot of difference. I mean, technically it touches it in one point, but you graph this on the graphing calculator or even something that could graph it better, you zoom in, those two things, the tangent line and the curve, are nearly indistinguishable. Now, if we're not on A, if we're out here, obviously the curve's way off of the tangent line, but, but near A, the curve and the tangent line, they're one and the same. Well, <clears throat> what a linear approximation does is that says, well, let's use then the tangent line to approximate values around for this particular point uh, A. <clears throat> we can use the tangent line to approximate uh, function values around A. That's what this, what this linear approximation business is really saying. You can use the, the tangent line to approximate the function values if you've got the tangent line at A and the, the function values that you're wanting are at the A values. That's more or less what, <coughs> what they're saying. Um, where this uh, comes in, it's called the, the linearization. <coughs> of F at A. <clears throat> it's this, it's L of X equals <coughs> F of A plus F prime of A times X minus A. <clears throat> That's the linearization of F at A. But you want to know what that is? This is just the tangent line at A. This, this just gives you a formula, if you will, for the tangent line at A. That's what this is. Um, and it comes from, what it comes from is a point-slope form. I, I don't typically use it a lot, but this, this just comes from a point slope form of a line because, all right, so this tangent line, <clears throat> point slope form of a line is this. It's y minus y1 <clears throat> equals m times x minus x1. Well, <clears throat> the x1, y1 is this point here, so it's a and the function value would be f of a. So if I plug in, so that's my x1, that's my y1. <clears throat> so I've got y minus f of a equals, talk about m just a second, uh, x minus x1, so that's a. Now, that's, that's the point slope of this tangent line. Now, we've talked about the m. 
what's the m of the tangent line? What's the slope of the tangent line? It's the derivative, right? So the slope of this tangent line is the derivative, and in this case, derivative evaluated at a. Well, if I solve this, if I add f of a to both sides, <coughs> ta-da, okay. f of a plus f prime of a times x prime. That's, it's, it's really, it's, that's all it is. It's just the tangent line. <coughs> so it's it's taking this function, which is not a line, and linearizing it. I think that's a word. Uh, it's making it a line, but it's it's only it's only good for points around a. And you know, how far can you get away from it? Well, depends on the function, probably. But <coughs> that's that's what this is. It, it is a formula. So there it is. But it's, it's really just the, the tangent line. All right, so let's find, <coughs> find the linearization. A couple of these. <coughs> For f of x equals x cubed minus 4x squared at a equals. <coughs> at a equals 3. All right, so linearization, let's talk about this L of x. L of x is f of a. Now in this case, we've got a is 3, so it'd be f 3 plus f prime of 3 times x minus 3. So the first thing you do is just plug in that a value, whichever a value you want. <clears throat> this, in this case, it just chose a to be 3. So we're linear, getting the linearization at 3. Well, all you do then is just plug in, <clears throat> plug in things there. So f of 3, so f of 3 here would be 3 cubed minus 4 times b squared. Just plug in x to be 3. 27 minus 36, negative 9, is that right? So f of 3 is negative 9. Need f prime, so f prime of x, just the derivative, so it's 3x squared minus 8x, so f prime of 3 would be 3 times 3 squared minus 8 times 3, so that's 3 times 9, 27 minus 24 is 3. Did I do that right? Do that? <laughs> and so there is uh, but one form of L of X. They, they usually do want you to go ahead and simplify, <coughs> go ahead and distribute. Negative 9 plus 3x minus 9. <coughs> so that's L of x equals 3x minus 18. It's the linearization of f of x. But what is it? It's the tangent line. Okay, we really just found the tangent line. Just calling it a little something different here. But the idea is, all right, so what, what's the purpose? Well, one of the purposes would be, all right, um, so this is a linear approximation. Here's another way they'll uh, phrase, phrase things. So this is a linear approximation of my original function, which is a cubic function. And it's uh, at <clears throat> a equals three. What that means is then, I can use this to approximate this around this. That's what that means. I can approximate this function with this if if my x values, a values are around three. 
<clears throat> so just just for example, all right. So what's the uh, what's the function value at three point one? Well, say I wasn't necessarily needing the actual function value. What this is saying, it's approximately then equal to three times three point one minus eighteen, which is nine point three minus eighteen, which is negative uh, what eight point seven. If I did that right. <coughs> It's about negative 8.7. And of course, we can check that uh, fairly easily. How close is that? So 3.1. What is it? 3.1 cubed minus uh, 4 times 3.1 squared. It's negative 8.649. <coughs> Actual value is uh, negative eight point six four nine. So did a pretty good job. This says it's negative eight point seven. It's actually about eight, negative eight point six four nine. So that's <coughs> uh, one thing that this means. This approximates that, but it has to be around three. Now, if we we moved it to ten. This would not at all give us a good approximation of the function value of 10 because, well, the linearization would change. And <coughs> everything in the equation would never change. So. Does that see uh, maybe a little bit there what we're talking about? All right, so let's do one more and then we'll <coughs> kind of do a different. All right, so if I <clears throat> the linearization of f of x equals 1 over x at a equals 2. <clears throat> Just another example. <clears throat> so L of x would be f of a, so a is 2, so we have f of 2 plus f prime of a, so we have f prime of 2 times x minus a, so we have x minus 2. f of 2, that's easy, <coughs> we have 1 half, plus, all right, uh, f prime here, well, that would probably be better uh, written as x to the negative 1 power, so that f prime would be negative 1, x to the minus 2. I want f prime of 2, <clears throat> so what is f prime of 2? It's negative 1 times 2 to the negative 2, so that's uh, negative 1 fourth. Yeah, so just plug those in, uh, a little distributing, combine like terms, and that's it. So it'll be negative one fourth x and then negative one fourth times negative two be positive one half. So L of x, L of x is negative one fourth x plus one, or one minus one fourth x, however you choose there. <coughs> so it's a good approximation of the function. Anyway. <clears throat> Alright. So let me show you this one other one. Kind of worded worded it worded it differently. <clears throat> uh, verify the linear Approximation at a equals zero. And its sine of x is approximately equal to x. <clears throat> so we're to verify this linear approximation. 
So it's just a little different wording than we previously had. And we kind of already know the answer, uh, if you will, to uh, to our linear equation, uh, linear linearization. We already kind of know it because here's what this means. This is saying the linear approximation of sine of x is x. That's, a, that's a, just a line. So the linear approximation of sine of x is x. That's what this means. So do our, uh, <clears throat> so do our equation, here's what this means to our linearization equation, here's what this means. This is my f of x, and what this is saying is if that's the f of x and that's the a, then this is the l of x. It's basically one is to show that if this is my f of x and this is my a, that's my l of x. That's what this is for. So it's the same problem just worded a little differently. <clears throat> so, what is L of X if that's F of X? Well, so we have F of zero plus F prime of zero times X minus zero, so that's gonna work out. Now, also, what about F of zero? What would F of zero be? If this is F of X, what's F of zero? Well, it'll be sine of zero, and what's the sine of zero? Sine of zero, zero. Yeah, so f of zero is zero. <clears throat> what about f prime zero? Well, what is f prime of x? If that's f of x, f prime of x would be the derivative of sine of x, cosine of x. And in the formula, I want f prime of zero. <clears throat> What's the cosine of zero? So L of X is this, oh, we've got a bunch of zeros there, a couple of zeros. Yeah, that just works out to be X. Then. So it checks out. <clears throat> we did prove, so we just showed that L of X is X. That's, that's what we thought it would be. Okay, so if that's the way it's worded, that, that's all. Just use the function as your f of x and plug it into the linearization L of x equation and then show it works. Now, interesting thing here though, this is a real handy, uh, I think certain places they use this. This is saying the sine of x is approximately x with a is zero, a near zero. So what that means is, uh, all right, so point one. Point one is close to uh, zero. What this is saying, what by that little rule there, what is this saying that's going to be approximately equal to? X, right? Point one. What is the sign of point one? Point zero nine nine eight. That's the actual value. That's pretty close, isn't it? Uh, <coughs> works, so zero, so let's sign of negative point zero five. Well, it's approximately negative zero point zero five, right? It's close to zero, so the sign of it's gonna be x. So sign, let's check, check it out. Sign of negative point zero five. Negative 0 0.0499 is the actual value. Pretty handy little no uh, back there. Anyway, sidebar. <clears throat> is that okay? Any questions or concerns? Alright, that's what I was going to show you on that. 